just his personality, but many men who served under him absolutely adored him and would be very upset if I said anything too very negative, I think. <laughs> there was, of course, Sicily, the big trouble. What was his big trouble in Sicily? That's right, he slapped a soldier, a wounded soldier, two of them actually. And this is going to be very, very disheartening. And I can tell you that our families back at home especially, they didn't like hearing that one of their own, and it could have been their boy, all right, was being made fun of, was being slapped by General Patton, somebody who, who had been fighting, had been injured in a battle. This will really cause quite a little pivot in, in his immediate plans. Eisenhower is going to have to shift things around a little bit. Operation Fortitude will come out of all of this. We'll talk greatly about Operation Fortitude. Have you ever heard of something called the Battle of the Bulge? Yes. Oh my God, this is it. This would be what George Patton would have dreamed of, what he would have waited for. This is his moment. Huh? The city of Bastogne. He will be there. He'll get there. He'll, he'll release all of those American prisoners, the 101st. He'll get there. He saves the day, and I'm not exaggerating, and I know there are lots of other people involved, but you have to give George Patton his due. He and his third army in this last final thrust by Adolf Hitler. The end of the war comes on May 8, 1945. Um, actual definition of a warrior, um, just a man that's driven. He loved everything about the army. He, I think, was... At the very end of his life, he was, you know, contemplating retiring. He's only 60, but he was not happy about that. You know, this had been his life since his West Point days for decades. And he was very dramatic. He was very, very confident in his own skills. He liked to be flamboyant. He liked to set up scenes that made him look good. And so to come out of that life and do what? What do you do in retirement? I think it was tough. But you know, he didn't have to make that decision because he's going to be in a car wreck. Mm -hmm. And the car wreck is hardly something to get excited about. He was hit by an army truck. If you can believe it. And, no, and no, neither his car or the army truck are going fast. But you know, and he had two other people with him in his car. They were just fine and dandy. But he hits the glass. You know, it was a car that was driven and there was like a glass partition between the front seat and the back seat. He hit that glass. And when the other two guys got out, everybody said, my gosh, what just happened here? You know, Patton didn't get out of the car. So they looked back in and he said, I'm hurt. He said, I can't seem to move my legs. And uh, so they immediately called for help to only discover that he had indeed broken his neck. And George Patton will be dead within about a week and a half. So the decision to retire was never his. He will be taken before that decision has to be made. If you're looking at our front page, I think this is a pretty good photograph of him. I don't think you could call him a handsome man, but he was certainly a pleasant looking man at times. He had a fierce look. Do you know he had a little dog that he kept with him during World War II the last couple of years? And the little dog's name was Willie. Do you remember Willie at all? He was a white bull terrier, I think. And uh, he was a kind of a stern looking dog. I would be afraid of Willie, you know, if he walked in here. And uh, so there is one, I don't know his rank or who he was, but toward the end of the war, one of these officers had to go in and talk to George Patton and Willie was sitting in the chair next to George Patton. And uh, the officer talked, he said, I was a little intimidated by George Patton, truthfully, you know, General Patton, kind of scary guy. And he said, when I was getting ready to walk out the room, Patton turned, called me and, and wanted to tell me something else. And he said, I turned around and he said, I've never seen two more fierce looking sets of eyes <laughs> <laughs> looking at me. And indeed, George Patton kind of practiced this look, we're told. He liked giving you the look so that you knew exactly that he was being pretty serious about everything. He had a little nickname, I'm supposing that you all are familiar with it. It was called Old Blood, uh, Blood and Guts, huh? And the soldiers would say, 
uh, our guts, or our blood, his guts. So he could come up with the plan, and I want to tell you General Patton could come up with some absolutely magnificent strategies, but it will be those men that will have to carry it through. If you're also looking at...